Today, we're going to learn how to send push notifications into your app using Firebase Cloud Messaging. Push notifications can be a great way for helping your users re-engage with your app by offering some kind of special discount like, you know, Black Friday coupons or even a notification like a new Tinder match. So if you're as excited as I am for push notifications, sit back, grab some coffee, and let's get those Android brains fired up. So the first thing you want to do is set up a project in the Firebase console. I've already got one set up here, but if you don't, you can go ahead and click add project and set one up. Once you do, you can click on your project here. Well, next we want to go ahead and add our app. So we're going to add an app in here, click add app, and it's going to be Android, of course, because <coughs> iOS sucks. Then we can create a package name here and our package name is probably going to be the name of your app. So maybe if we're making an app for Beyonce, let's call this app. And Beyonce, if you're watching this, hit me up. Then you can create a nickname for your app. So Beyonce's World, let's call it that. That sounds like an awesome app, Beyonce's World. Then you're going to register your app. And what you want to do next is download this Google Services JSON. This will allow your app to talk to your Firebase console. And we're going to use that in a second here. But let's click Next. So now we want to integrate the Firebase SDK as well as the Google Services Gradle plugin into our Android application. So let's open up Android Studio and I'm going to show you guys exactly how to do that. So once you've got Android Studio open, you want to go into your project level build.gradle file and it's going to look something like this. And you want to add in the Google Services plugin. Next, we're going to go into our app level build.gradle file and apply that plugin. Then in our dependencies block, we're going to add in the Firebase SDK as well as the analytics SDK. So I've commented out the analytics one because it's not necessary, but it's recommended. And if you're having trouble getting this to work, this might help. And then you're going to sync your project. So now that we have our dependencies in here, we're going to need to add in the Google services JSON file that we had downloaded earlier. So let's go into our project view, open this up, open up the app tab and add in the Google services JSON file. So let's talk a little bit about how Firebase works. So initially when you launch your app and your app needs to communicate with the Firebase cloud messaging, Firebase is going to send a token, which is just a string to your app. And then you're going to use that token and plug that into the Firebase console. And using that token, the Firebase console can now communicate with your app because it knows how to identify your app through that token. So what that means is we need to set up our app to be able to accept that token. So the first thing we're going to do here is create a class that extends Firebase messaging service. And let's call it my Firebase messaging service. So now that that's created, we need to extend the Firebase messaging service. So we have a class called my Firebase messaging service. So after extending the Firebase messaging service, we need to override a function called on new token to be able to receive that token each time Firebase sends that token to our app. So we're going to override on new token. And for now, let's just go ahead and create a log message. In a real world application, what you want to do is send this token to your backend server. So that way your server can communicate with your application and we're going to show you that later. So next we're going to need to register this service in our manifest. So let's go to our, our Android manifest and by registering the service whenever Firebase sends out a, a broadcast in our application it's going to say hey I have this token for your app who's interested so we have to tell the system that our app is interested in listening for it and we're going to do that by declaring a service in here called my Firebase service and with this intent filter for listening for messages. So then go back into our service. So now that we have all that set up, we're going to go ahead and run our app for the very first time. Great. So that token comes in and we can see here it's like ENW, whatever it is. So we can just right click on this, copy the value. So now we can take this token, go back into the Firebase console, scroll down to cloud messaging. Click on send your first message and we're going to type in a message here by the rich shady and then we're going to see send message and we're going to use that token which we just got and we're going to send this push notification to this to the device that has this token so let's go ahead and try that out and notice here that nothing happens and that's exactly because 
what we're sending here is a notification message and notification messages don't display anything unless the app is in the background so if you put the app in the background and try this again then you would see the message show up right here and you click on it, it should take us back into our app so now that we know how to send messages from the firebase console we're also going to look at how to send messages from our very own backend application so here we have our, our own backend application and it's wired up such that whenever you send a request to this endpoint right here, so slash send message slash the user ID and then the actual message on here, you would see a dialog pop up with the exact same message that was typed into here. So for example, if we typed in bingo, we would see that immediately show up here or I am slim shady then you would see it show up there as well and this all if you notice the logs in here you can see I am slim shady and this is all configured through our backend application so let's go ahead and take a look at what the setup for that looks like so to also integrate firebase cloud messaging into your backend application you're going to need to come back into the firebase console and do a few things so we're going to click on project overview click on project settings then go to service accounts and we're going to since we're going to be using the firebase admin sdk we need to generate a new private key so click generate a new private key and download that and once that's downloaded you can pick whatever language you're using since we're using kotlin we can easily use the java portion of it so we're going to copy this and go into our project so first we want to initialize the firebase sdk so we paste whatever we just copied and this is the path to the Firebase SDK JSON a private key we just downloaded. Then get the options, Firebase options. And now we can initialize Firebase. So the first thing we're going to do in here is add in routing so the user can be able to register their token. Whenever the Android app has a new token, it would send that to our backend. So we set up routing. And then we're going to be sending a post request to slash register user ID as well as then that FCM token. Then we're going to pull out the user ID from that post request from that call. Then also grab the FCM token, store the FCM token in a database, which for us is just a hash map, so just a key value pair. Then we would just log that message for the token and the user ID and then just respond with OK. So this would allow our Android application to send tokens generated by Firebase to our own backend. Next, we want to set up a trigger for messages to be sent to our Android application. And we can do that by none other than a get request to slash send message user ID and the message to send. And we will be able to trigger this from our browser. Then from that get request, we would pull out the user ID, the message to send, as well as the token which we would retrieve from the database. And using all of those, we'd be sending a message with message data, a token identifier, and all of that would be packaged up and sent to Firebase as a message. Then we can add in some simple error handling, so when the error message isn't null, we respond with OK, otherwise we can just say bad request. And that's it for the backend side. So now let's go back into our Android app. So in our Android app, to send tokens to our backend, we'd call a function called send registration to server. And for this, we want to use something like a work manager. So that's something you would probably want to set up, but we already have some implementation set up. And if you want to see what work manager looks like, leave a comment in the description so we can make a video about that. So now that the tokens are being sent to our backend, we also have to set up, receive the message and send that message into our activity. So to do that, we're going to implement on message received. Then from that, we'll pull out the remote message and then log the message that we got and then pass that message to our activity. So we pass the message to our activity by using a broadcast receiver. So let's go ahead and implement that as well. Then we're going to be sending an intent since we're using a broadcast receiver with the action send message and then the extra we're going to put in that message then use a local broadcast receiver and then we're going to send that message with this intent but we still need to set up what this action so that's just a companion object and just a string that says intent action send message so now let's go ahead and receive this message in our activity and show a dialog 
Woo, this is the home stretch, baby. So we need to declare a broadcast receiver to be able to receive the messages that were sent from our Firebase service. So let's go ahead and create a broadcast receiver. So in on create, we're going to initialize it and then implement the on receive message. So whenever we receive the message, what do we want to do? So we want to pull the message out from the string extra, then create a dialog, set the message, set the title, then what we want the positive button to do, and then show it. So in addition to this, we also have to register and unregister a broadcast receiver so it knows when to listen for the broadcast and when to stop listening for the broadcast. So we would say whenever we're in the on resume state, we want to create an intent filter with that action send message, which is similar to this one, and then create the or register the broadcast receiver then. And then in on pause, whenever the activity is paused, we want to unregister that broadcast receiver. And that's it. So let's go ahead and give this a test run. Vroom, vroom. So I've just gone ahead here and organized the screens better for hopefully better understanding. So over here on the left is where our backend lives. So we register our token and can send messages from our backend, which we will trigger through the browser. So then this is our Android application, and that's where the, this code is getting run. And over here, you would see this is what's going to trigger our backend application to send messages to our Android. So it would go like this, and then from there into our Android application. So let's go ahead and run this. And if we look in here, our Android app was registered with the correct token, which is exactly what we want. So the next thing we want to do is fire off a message. I'm a real boy! And then once we send this message, our backend application should receive it and then send it to Firebase and then that would send it to our application. So hopefully that makes sense. So again, you have a backend application and you have your Android app and the, the trigger. So you trigger from here. So you trigger the application from here and then this trigger, which sends it to uh, essentially our backend and our backend talks to Firebase and Firebase now talks to our application. So that's it for this one. Hopefully you enjoyed this. This was both fun and interesting to make. So thanks for watching guys. If you're interested in this channel, please give it a thumbs up. That's it for this one.